Hello, everyone. This is Bill Apter, and I just finished taping an episode of Count It Out with Mike and Tyler, or Tyler and Mike. They're brilliant hosts. You've got to listen. You've got to see. Count It Out. Yeah, I endorse it. They've got the after chat seal of approval. What's going on? This is the main event, Monster Pope, and you're watching Count It Out, Mike and Tyler. Well, we are live, pals, and welcome to another edition of the Bill After Seal of Approved Count It Out with Mike and Tyler. My name is Tyler, and I'm ready to burn it down today. And I am yeah. joined with the best there is, the best there was, and the best there will be, be Mojito, the it. Hitman Heart, Mike. Love it. We got a fun show today, Mike. We are going to have a debate about uh, Bret Hart versus Seth Rollins, SummerSlam performances. I will be taking the Seth Rollins side. You will be taking the Bret Hart side. We are going to talk very quickly about SummerSlam. We are going to talk very quickly about Ric Flair's last match. And uh, and I'm going to do a list. And we're going to do the show backwards this week because I'm going to do the list really early in the show. And then we're going to do our debate. Mike, are you ready to rumble? I, I'm assuming you're playing music right now. Did you not hear that? No, you're just dancing like a moron. Like, so I got it up against my microphone and everything. Are uh, you playing Brett's music? Yeah. I yeah, no. Know. None of us could hear that. You were just okay. dancing. That's one point for me already oh, on the debate. Oh, I understand why. Yeah. Well, I'm not editing any of this because it is <laughs> way too late and this show has got to be up early. That so, makes me um, very upset. Mike, let's uh, let's get into uh, the news of the week real quick because I want to jump into the real list. Real quick. Yeah. I want to jump into the list big time this week. Uh, SummerSlam. Let's, Vince let's... McMahon has come back and taken over WWE. Vince McMahon is all elite. <laughs> <laughs> what do you think of SummerSlam? I know uh, we had different opinions on the main hey, event. Hey, controversial opinion, man. I fucking loved SummerSlam this week. Uh, I don't think that's year. controversial, by the way. I, I, I don't know. It, it's hard to see because, you know, Fucking online fans are going to shit on something, even if they like it, just to shit on it. Um, so I can't tell if people actually liked it or not. Me, personally, I fucking loved it this year, man. I had a real good time watching it, which says something, because I was in a real shitty mood that day. I, I was were. just, I was fucking, I was in a bit of a depression. I was I, I was not having it that day. I started playing it. I had both my kids in my arms asleep, and I'm like, fuck it, I'm going to watch SummerSlam. I watched the whole thing this year. The whole fucking thing in one night. That's unprecedented for me. I can't even watch an episode of Impact in less than three days. Yet, I watched a full fucking pay-per-view. And I loved it, man. It was a lot of fun. I thought, the, uh, I don't think there was any matches I hated. There was definitely a few that I'm like, eh, on. But the majority of them, I thought, were, were really well done. The stories were were, were good and solid. Uh, got some surprises that I really enjoyed right from the beginning with the with returning return of Bailey and um, Dakota Kai and uh, and Io Shirai. You know those those are really cool moments for me. Um, then moving on, you and I will 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 discuss this and and I know we don't see an eye to eye, but that main event, man, I won't lie to me you that that was my favorite match of the Roman Brock saga. And it's top three favorite Brock matches for me personally. Wow. I loved it. I loved it. I really did. Yeah, not so much for me on the main event. And and, and I didn't, and, and, I didn't and you're hate... not the only one, man. A lot I know a lot of people, like even in my personal life that, that says the same thing as you. I, I just I just I thought it was a lot of fun. A yeah, no. So here's my thing. Like, I thought the match was fun too. I love the the tractor spot where he lifted the ring up. I thought that was awesome. I thought the first half of the match was really fun. Like Brock yeah. jumping out of the tractor to start the match was awesome. Right. To me, uh, the, <laughs> the the microphone flip. 
holy shit. <laughs> yeah, like the the middle and and the ending of the match show to me is where I have a problem with it. I just I got bored watching it. Uh, it was very I'm repetitive. So surprised I that, that I I didn't. Well, um, here's you want, why you want to talk about getting bored. We're going to talk about getting bored later when you make me watch a, a bunch of fucking Seth Rollins matches. Yes, because but, Seth Rollins is such a terrible wrestler. He's not. He's not. <laughs> like, but the matches I had to watch today are not a not evidence of his best work, in my opinion. Well, then you um, clearly don't like wrestling because oh, <laughs> Seth Rollins and SummerSlam is like the. I have seven matches that are bangers here. Six, mm-hmm. six for sure that are bangers. I mean. It's okay to be wrong. It's fine. But we'll uh, save the argument uh, for a minute because I want to <laughs> say my gripe. Let me say my gripe about the main event. All right. Was it? Uh, listen, is if it's about the finish? Yes, the finish. No, was, it's not the finish. The finish was unoriginal. I don't care um, about that. It was. The... I thought. I thought they should have used the tractor. Blah blah blah. Uh, no, but it was fine. It was. It didn't ruin the match for me. By any me, me neither. I didn't okay. care about the finish. I got bored watching the match. There was a, this the two sequences of the match. Where yeah. Brock Lesnar, you know, in the middle part of the match, he took over the match, which is great. It's time for Brock. And then started seat. doing Suplex City. Uh, but but yeah, yeah, at this point in the game, you need that, right? Well, listen, let me finish here. Let me finish. You okay. keep cutting yeah. me off here. Let me let me get my gripe out here. Um, Brock would do one move to Roman. Nine count, get up. Brock would do a second move to Roman. Nine count, get up. Brock would do a third. Four, it happened like four or five times, which is mm-hmm. fine. But then all of a sudden, they just switch it. Then it was Roman would do a bra a move to Brock nine. Count. It's just I got really bored. They did okay. it for like they did it for like ten minutes, man. And I just was like, yeah, I get it. Like it's a last man standing match, but like I watched Sean and Hunter have this match, and it was you know what I mean. Like yes. spot, like was give it, me a couple spots my, in there. Yes, give me was a couple it my spots. Favorite in last there. man standing match ever? Of course not. No, it was. I got bored. I it's not um, that I hated the match. I just got we, bored watching it. Can we be honest at this point though? At this point in the game in 2022, do you agree with me that this must be one of the hardest matches to have? I mean, in or, in, 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 I mean, in the what the attention of span of people original, uh, making it something you haven't seen. There's only so much you can do in the last man standing. No, right? I don't. I think I don't think it's the hardest match to have. I still think having a cage match is harder than having a last man standing match because a cage match you're stuck in in the cage. You know what I mean? Yeah, you can't go anywhere. There's no blood. Good, there's you no can blood. Make that match watchable. There's no blood in the WWE though. Like you know what I mean? If you're watching the WWE with the last man standing match, you have options to go places. You have options to do that truck stuff, which was entertaining. Just yeah. lay the match out a little bit differently. You know what I mean? Yeah. Have yeah. have Roman have Roman get those heat spots. Have Brock get up, and then do a couple spots. You know what I mean? A couple of tra- like trans uh, transactions in the match. Like, and I-, I just got bored with the one hit nine count one hit. They did it like twelve times. And I I got bored watching it. I, I not that I hated the match. I just I, I thought the match was really entertaining. I I thought the the spectacle of it all, especially for WWE standards lately. I. I just got bored watching the, the the last half of it. All right, let me ask you two questions. Yeah, I I respect your opinion. I do. I you know we're never gonna like the same matches. Um, it doesn't change my opinion at all. I enjoyed it mm. uh, for what it was. Um, do I understand where you're coming from? To a to a to a degree, yes. But the things that you found boring, I, I found pivotal to the story. That's I thought Michael my, Cole did me. fantastic. Michael of Cole course, was amazing. Of course he did. Because calling fuck it. everybody. Because fuck everybody who doesn't think Michael Cole is one of the greatest commentators of all time. Yeah. Uh, of the only, course he did. The only dumber sentence he I've heard somebody say Michael Cole not being a good commentator is somebody saying Seth Rollins doesn't have good SummerSlam matches. Because that's just stupid to hear. I'm not saying he didn't have good SummerSlam matches. I'm you, saying you that. You just said it like two minutes ago. You said, saying, I made I'm you watch so, no, no, shit no, no. this week. I'm. I did watch some shit, but I also watching shit on my Brett list. So let's not fucking split hairs here. Um, I'm just saying that that some of breast breast Ooh. some of Brett's greatest matches, as we're gonna get into, are from SummerSlam. Yeah, in I my think. opinion, in my personal opinion, none of Seth's greatest matches are from SummerSlam. Mm, I think some. I think I think, I, th- I think Seth has had much better matches somewhere else. Um. This does not change how I feel about Seth Rollins. I think Seth Rollins is one of, if not the best wrestler in WWE of the last 
10 to 15 years. Yeah, I, I thought it was a really bad call to pull his match off SummerSlam this year with Riddle. I'm so confused about that. They, Does that want to work? Yeah, it it's all be, it's right? work. It, it must be right because yeah. if, if he really had a stinger, then they wouldn't have done that spot in SummerSlam. Yeah, it, it was a work. They're just trying to build yeah. more hype behind it, and I, I understand that. But I mean, that's a pretty big marquee match at SummerSlam. You want to have on there, I think. So my two questions for you: Number one, have we seen the last of Brock Lesnar? No, no, you don't absolutely think so? not. No. Okay. Um, number two. This wasn't your favorite match at SummerSlam, but you flat out said it wasn't a horrible SummerSlam. What did you like about SummerSlam this year? Um, I love the atmosphere. I thought okay. the outdoor setting really it was a great it. other other than Bucky Beaver's bullshit. Um, Classic, every, right? Yeah, everything else. The production was was decent. The atmosphere was amazing. Uh, I loved the first I thought... time we've seen an outdoor stadium since Wembley, right? Um. Well, for SummerSlam, at least, yeah. Yeah, I, that's what I meant, of course. Uh, I really thought Bianca and Becky—they're just magic when they get in the ring on a big stage. I that—that okay. that was my match of the night, personally. Uh, the tag match was good. The street profits you, and the Usos. Did you have good. Becky turning face on your bingo card? Because I didn't. Uh, no, but I'm not surprised by it because there's okay. not a lot else. But now she's going to be out anyway, so it doesn't matter. Separated mm-hmm. shoulder, right? Which is mm-hmm. too bad. Mm-hmm. But um. Let, let's shift gears a little bit here, Mike. And and something that overshadowed SummerSlam was Ric Flair's well, last match. Before we get into that, really quickly, I just want to give a shout out to the man who got the biggest pop in all of SummerSlam 22. And that's our boy, Pat McAfee. Holy yeah. fuck, did he get popped? Yeah. Oh, it's man. Pat's, Pat's great. I didn't I didn't actually He's see so his match. I, I skimmed through that because I was starting the to get match, tired. The match, was, the match was okay. Um, The story was fun. Uh, I like the story they're telling of him and Corbin because they used to be roommates and shit like that. It was good. Um, bringing in Corey Graves to do uh, commentary as uh, a good friend of Corbin, and then Cole being a good friend of McAfee. That was a, that was fun. The match was just okay. Yeah, and that's what it, that's but, all you'd expect out of it, right? But for all the people you know used to shit talk, including myself in his early career, used to shit talk about McAfee. Holy fuck is that man over. I hey. love Pat McAfee. And, and don't slouch on Corbin either, man. A lot of people mm. always shit on Corbin. That guy can go in too man. bad. He, he can really get it done in the ring. He, he's a good hand to have. Before we move on to your, your, your flair thing, do you know much about his NFL career? Corbin? Kind of just, yeah. I know he played for the Cardinals. Um, I don't. Well, he played for, was it Indianapolis? The Colt, he uh, would have been with the Colts as well. He was with the Colts, right? Yeah. Yeah, I don't. Uh, did he win a Super Bowl? It seems to me. I that feel like he, he might have. I don't know about that. It seems to me that his career kind of just fizzled out really quick. I, I'm sure he got hurt, or I'm sure or, you know what I mean. Like I, I'm going to pull it up right now as we're as we're talking about it here. He played. No, he only played for the Indianapolis Colts and the Arizona Cardinals. Okay. Uh, he might have won a Super Bowl with the Colts actually because they did. Uh, they did win a Super Bowl. Well, does that mean the McAfee also has a Super Bowl? McAfee should have a a Super Bowl because yeah. McAfee was more successful in his career than Corbin was. Yeah. I'd have to, we'd have to ask. Uh, I'm sure I'll get the text message from uh, from Mr. Kerr there, Mr. Uh, Kerr, our ginger, who I had a great conversation with about our Chris Benoit talk last week. Oh. Uh, he 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 sent me a message and said, "Why should Benoit not go in the Hall of Fame? It shouldn't be personal. It should be professional only." And I said, "Wrestling is different than the real world." It really is. And... But I did, I did. Him and I had a great talk, and and we kind of both agreed, "Why not put him in the legacy wing if you're going to put him in?" I don't know. It's, if you're going to put that, him in, that's a hard one. That's a really hard one. Yeah, I mean, I I don't think he should get the whole induction and speech and all that stuff. But if you are doing it just off of you know credentials i mean if pete, rose, no, if pete rose isn't in the mlb hall of fame which is crazy then, 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 then you have a hard fight for benoit no yeah, yeah. And what I, what i'm saying is that if you ever were to put benoit in the hall of fame i think it should just be in like the legacy wing grouped in with like 10 other people yeah we'll see yeah you just hide it in there right but that's a yeah. different conversation for a different day I still don't know if I'd put Benoit in the Hall of Fame. Oh, we got it. We got to get Kerr back on the show. We'll we'll talk about some uh, wrestling and some football real soon. Yeah, football uh, season's I, coming I, up. I man. mean, football season's coming up. It's a good time to get him on. Yeah, we'll uh, we'll we'll put together. All right, let's talk about some uh, Nature Boy. 
Yeah, I don't want to talk too much about this. Um, I definitely got to well, say. I haven't seen it yet. I haven't yeah. seen the, the pay-per-view yet. And I plan on watching it. So we can't talk too much because I don't have an opinion quite yet. Uh, the the one thing I want to say is just how good of a job I think that they did building this match. Because, um, hey, they worked both of us, man. You know what I mean? Oh they, yeah, with the with the gym, with the lethal, lethal stuff, stuff I, they worked. I, they worked me for I sure. I bought in on it hook, line, yep, and sinker. Too. We both me were too. texting each other. We thought Flair was a dick for not putting him in. Yeah. Um. To me, Jeff Jarrett was incredible in this match. He really okay. he channeled some uh, some old school heat. He was throwing drinks at fans, and he was getting the fans riled up. But he was bumping like crazy. He was in great shape, Mike. He really. I mean, I, I mean, that doesn't surprise me, Jarrett is in good shape jared yeah, can but, still go but yeah. we've seen a lot of jared and, and i know jared uh was going through some substance problems for a bit there and i, I think yeah. he's turned his life around and and you know you can really tell like that guy is in shape and and he was on his tip-top game andrade and lethal were both also fantastic in this match um flair you know flair was flair he did way more than he needed to do and you knew that he would um he didn't do a lot of stuff that i think was probably laid out that they okay. wanted to do. Did he, did he end up doing the spot that Charlotte told him not to? No, Flair, okay. but it, it got a little scary towards the end. He made his entrance. Uh, first of all, the place went nuts for Flair, obviously, right? Um, he did his entrance. He had the original big gold belt, uh, which he wore to the ring. The original like the one. From, big, like the big gold? or the... Big gold, yeah. Okay. The original, because Conrad Thompson was... owns it. Okay, that makes sense. I was kind of hoping to come up with the ten pounds, but that no, Conrad that, owns yeah. Conrad owns big gold, so Flair came I ca- out. For I kind that. of I kind of assumed in my mind I was expecting Billy Corgan to give them the ten pounds for this. Yeah, but, maybe. Okay, but yeah, no, but... Con- Conrad owns big ten, so they went with their big gold, so they went with that. Flair mm-hmm. started the match, which I thought was you know crazy, but it, the first half of the match was real fun. It was that's, just Flair. That's weird booking to me. Yeah, it's Flair save being Flair. Flair. You, you say Flair, though. Well, Flair, you know, Flair's calling who, his shots who, in there, who, right? I was going to say, who do you think wrote this match? Flair? Flair, 100%. Because yeah. I, yeah. I was reading what Lisa was saying about it today, and he said, you know, Flair, he, he said to Flair, what do you want to do? He goes, what the fuck are you talking about? We call it out there. Like, so. I love it. Uh, old, old school, school right? Shit, baby. Yeah, uh, love it. it. It was fun for a bit, um, and then it got scary. Um, yeah. if I was watching it live, I watched it on delay. So I knew that flair was up and about after, but if I was watching yeah. it live, I, there were a couple parts where, um, flair, flair started bleeding, which was about, and once he started bleeding is where I think he was out of gas at that point. Cause they rolled him into the yeah. ring and I think they were supposed to give him a superplex and, and they could barely get him on the, the turnbuckle. And I'm pretty sure lethal, pulled him down and said, we're not doing this or flair might've waved it off. And I think lethal kind of took over game, a yeah. normal suplex, but that was it for flair. He he rolled out to the ring after that. Uh, Andrade got the hot tag and then they were supposed to hot tag flair to come in for the finish and flair couldn't get up. And as Andrade was walking to him, flair was kind of waving him away. Like, no, no, don't tag me in. And then they, tagged him in and he couldn't stand up Mike he just rolled into the ring like it got scary they tried to put brass Dad. knuckles on his hands he was twitching a lot apparently he had passed out during the match I, I got really worried about it Um, you know I, I'm not going to sit here and talk shit that the match happened because everything happened and Flair is okay you know what I mean, I mean it's over now but did it have to happen but uh, but I'm that's not, not for us to say. I'm not going to judge Flair for going out there and doing that, especially for his age and what he's been through. He did way more. Yeah. He did way more. And, and you know, I think from a personal accomplishment for him to get through and do that, I think that was probably a big deal for him. Um, yeah. The last chop he ever threw in professional wrestling, he dedicated to The Undertaker. He yelled it out. This is for Taker. Woo! I fucking love that. Was it and was it on Jarrett or was it on? I can't remember. I can't oh, remember okay. who he hit it. I think that it was on is Jarrett. Beautiful. But yeah, and, you know, and it, it though was I won't lie to me, I won't lie to you. I wish he dedicated it to Dusty. Yeah, but I mean, Taker was in the front row, and Flair loves Taker, right? So. I wonder if I wonder if Cody was there. I have no idea. I I haven't heard any reports about Cody being anywhere around SummerSlam weekend. But listen, I it's over. I'm glad that Flair got it. Hopefully, it's out of his system. I don't do think we ever think need. We've, 
Do you think we've seen Flair's last match? Yes, yes. Do I don't think, think. Do you, do you think he's 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 content? He's happy. He's. I mean, doesn't he's, need to do this anymore. He sounded like he was he was really emotional after the match, as Flair would yeah. be. He got a great response. Um, I mean, if I think he's content for now, who knows if he's going to go back and watch it and be like, "What the fuck? I need to do another yeah. one." But I don't yeah. think we're going to see another one. I don't think. I, any, I don't, don't think we need to see I, another one. I don't think there's a promoter alive that'll let it happen, including Conrad Thompson. Yeah, it got scary, man. It, it did. It got scary. I and think. Hey, he, I think even Conrad would put his foot down and be like, "No, Rick, we're not doing it." Yeah. I, you know, Conrad got involved. Which, before we get into the big show here, um, here's a question: How much money do you think Conrad Thompson made this weekend? Oh, buddy, Starcast was huge, baby. Yeah, he made he made some coin. He made some coin for sure. But, who made uh, more? Who made more money this weekend, Conrad Thompson or Ric Flair? Oh, Conrad, Conrad Thompson. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it probably all went to <laughs> Flair's payoff, though, <laughs> <laughs> or Flair's bar tab. Who knows? Holy fuck! But, From what I heard, that's probably I, a hell of a party. I, I, I heard. I heard right after the match, <laughs> you went out drinking with Kid Rock. Yeah, Kid Rock. Uh, Flair. Flair talked about Kid Rock his entire post match speech. Oh, gross. He said, Kid Rock showed up in the dressing room. and I, Like, I didn't have enough pressure on me. And he said, all right, it's my day off today, so it's your turn to entertain me. Ugh. Then he made out with a fat chick at SummerSlam. That was great. Yeah, he's he's a horrible garbage person. Sorry, that, I'm just that was rude. That that. Uh, she was a YouTuber. I shouldn't just say she. She is a, no, chick. She she's a TikToker. Her name is, I don't remember her real name. Her That's like her gimmick, though, right? Her like, gimmick name is Tra- uh, Trailer Park Tammy. She She's a whole thing. She, like... Does weird things where her fucking she does shit with her t- big old titty and she's Whatever. just that's let's, part of her, that's part of her gift. Let's move on from Trailer yeah. Park Tammy. Let's get into my <laughs> list. I want to do my list first this week, and then we're gonna All talk right. Brett and Seth. We'll do your list, and then we'll fight. Yeah, because because, um, because I have also ranked. So Seth Rollins has had eight um, SummerSlam matches. Yeah, I am curious to see which one did not make the top seven. How about before I give and you my I list, bear... tell me what one didn't yes. make your match. Tell me which one didn't make yours. Oh, easy. Seth versus Dominic. Okay. So we're on the yeah. same page. Here. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, Match's let me hit garbage. you. Let me hit you. It wasn't garbage. It was It was good for what it was. <laughs> match was Dominic's garbage. first match yeah. ever for his first match ever. That was a damn good match. Okay. Okay. Yeah, yeah but you can't. I can't base it like that. That's like saying, listen. Brett versus Isaac Yankum wasn't that bad because it was 1990. You know what I mean? No, no you can't do like that. Think... Bad match is a bad match is a bad match is a bad match. Nah, man, you're that wrong on this. Match. Seth, Seth carried Dominic through a decent match. Was it a great match that set the world on fire? No, but it wasn't a bad match either. It definitely wasn't. I've seen bad matches. That was right, not we'll, a bad match. We'll 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 get there. You gotta when I, when, you gotta when tip I count your, down the top nineteen. We'll get there. You gotta you gotta tip your cap to Seth Rollins for carrying a guy. Oh, one hundred percent. Did it, it, if this was a list of great accomplishments of Seth Rollins? Yeah. Which happened at but SummerSlam, by this, the way. That, Brett had to carry that, Bulldog through ninety two, man. <laughs> yeah, but, but now, come on, you're gonna compare Brett and Bulldog to Seth and fucking Dominic? No, I'm not comparing the matches. I'm comparing <laughs> the performances between two individuals. Yeah, they were both dialed All right. in. Number Let's seven. I have a feeling our orders are gonna be very different, and I'm looking forward to. It. I don't I'm think they're gonna, gonna be as different as you think they are. They are. Number seven. I got yeah. uh, Seth Rollins versus Dean Ambrose lumberjack match. See, very different. I, I mean, love this D- match. Dean Ambrose is in my number seven, but I I love this. I love this match. I thought it was fantastic. Um, I almost had it at my number six, but I I swapped it uh, at the very last minute. Um, how do you want? How do you want to do this? When you do each number, do you want me to tell you what my number was, or should I just save my list? No, you're me? just gonna bang yours out after. Like okay. quick, we're we're gonna talk in detail yeah. about my list, and then we'll sure. we'll just bang yours out quick time after. Sounds sounds good. Um. These guys had a wild brawl. The storyline was hot going into this with Rollins mm-hmm. freshly turning on Ambrose. I don't usually like lumberjack matches, and I thought they used the lumberjacks really, really good in this match. Uh, the spots they did with Ambrose. I am, I am so with you here. I don't like lumberjack matches. Yeah, and that's why. That's why this. This is. 
ridiculously higher than I ever thought it would be. When I tell you where it is, it's not my number seven, which is surprising. This because is the, I don't I don't like lumberjack matches. And th- this match, this might be one of the greatest lumberjack matches. In I would say it is the greatest lumberjack <laughs> yeah. match in history. I don't even think it's competition. This is the one that because I watch it early, like I originally had it in like my number four spot, and then like I'm like, uh, it's the one that just slowly kept getting bumped up because I just thought there was some better stuff, not because the match was bad. Um, but yeah, this was a great, great match. I love the finish where, where Seth used the briefcase, still keeps his heat, keeps Ambrose strong, keeps the feud going. I, I just thought everything about this was spectacular. Yeah, okay, I'm with it. Number six, I'm going mm-hmm. with, uh, I'm going to kind of go through my list fast too, because I have a feeling our debate's going to be bigger than the list. Yeah. Uh, number six, I went with uh, Seth versus Edge from uh, last year's SummerSlam. <laughs> Okay, yeah, we're way off base here. We and, and you know what? And I'm not gonna shit talk it. I love it. I love the fact that because you just said how much you love that lumberjack match, which means even at your number six spot, you still love this match. Yeah, I just love it a lot more. <laughs> and, I, I but do. that, but that's okay. I'm loving that. I I have a feeling you and I both respect Seth Rollins. Seth Rollins. In two very different ways. The only reason and that's why, cool. yeah. So here's my thing: from my number, my number six to my number three, like I could flip flop a lot of them. So it was very minor things that I was judging this on. And, and to me, I I didn't like the finish of this match. It just kind of came from out of nowhere with the with the edge tapping out Rollins. I, I just it caught me off Ooh. guard. Not that that's a bad thing. Which I which is one of my like pros yeah i just I love unpredictable shit i, I just hate being able to call shit yeah and i'm fine but i just felt like they didn't really build up to that submission a lot like to me it just okay. kind of came like really no, you're right. they field. didn't build up to it that's and, why it was so unpredictable yeah and i'm fine with that i thought these guys had great chemistry i don't think this is the best I match that they've had chemistry the brood and entrance am, was awesome i have beaten myself up uh for not at least mentioning this as an honorable mention last week on the uh on our build show this had a great build. Yes, it did. Uh, it really also, did. Uh, I don't think we mentioned Brock Lesnar versus CM Punk had a really good build at a SummerSlam as well. Uh, okay. Steve Steve Bourne sent me that message there. It's like, eh, you might be onto something there. I don't know if it'd make my list, but yeah, at least yeah. it's a strong honorable mention. No, um, this was a really uh, one of my favorite lines in this whole build. Is your your edge light? Yeah, yeah, great line. You know, great lo- line. love it, love it. And, and Edge is motivated. Rollins, of course, was great. Edge can still go; like he can keep up with the boys this day and age, no problem. In twenty in, in twenty twenty two, he can still do it. We're talking psychology was great sure. on this match. Uh, the back and forth, the pacing of it, everything was really, really great about this match. I really enjoyed. Hundred percent. That's why I'm very surprised it's your number six. Um, I, I just kind of where it is on my list. But... I just kind of enjoyed the rest of these matches better, and I think okay. my I think one of mine as well is a bit of a homer for me, like not a homer, but like a soft, like a <laughs> lot, like a you know, I'll tell you it when I get to it. It's not I yet. don't think we're gonna argue about any of these matches except for one. I think there's uh, one match that I have a feeling I have it very, very, like low on my list, and you're gonna have it. Like, I have a feeling it's gonna be your number one or number two, and we're that's the only time we're gonna be we're gonna butt heads, but we'll get there. Let's let's hear your number five Seth versus Finn Balor Universal title. <laughs> and this is you just proved my fucking point here. Our, our orders are so ridiculously different, and I'm loving it. This tell, great me, match. tell me about this. Tell me about this match. I love this match. Me this too. This is phenomenal. Me too, and especially the fact that Finn got injured so early in this match. That and and they still so and they still put on a, a match yeah. of this caliber. I it could breaks my off. heart to know that that Finn, you know, was the first universal champion and then had to forfeit the next night. That's like that. Yeah. But for him to be the first universal champion out of that match, fucking a. Yeah. Because um, in the history of that particular title, it's in my like if we were to do top seven universal title matches. That's in my top. I'd say three for me. Four, yeah. five, three to four. Yeah, for sure. I love this match. Love this match. Absolutely. Um, and was this not, correct me if I'm wrong, but this was Finn's pay-per-view debut. Pay-per-view debut. 
on the main roster. I believe you're correct because they brought yeah. him up a couple weeks before this, and they put him over Strong, they put him over Roman Absolutely. Clean, they put him over Cena in a, in a four way. And I have a feeling that if he didn't get hurt here, his career would have went a very different path. I think he still was going to get laid out by Brock and lose the belt, though. I you think, think so? that was, yeah. I think I, I think he. I don't know. Well, because Kevin Owens won the belt and dropped it to Goldberg. So, like, who knows where they would have went with it, yeah. right? But uh, these guys just had great chemistry together. The the transitions between moves that these guys would do were so smooth. Uh, the finish was so strong. Both guys got really good near falls throughout the whole match. Yeah, this was uh, this was a great match. Love it. So this is the one where I think I'm just being a little bit biased on it. My number four is my love for tag team wrestling. I went with the shield and the bar. I'm not going to lie to you. I didn't love this match. And I don't I hate do. it. I don't hate it. I didn't love it. And I think that that's not from my. I think I think it's my standard. I think number one, I think the bar is one of the greatest tag teams of the last 10 years. I think they're okay. the most underrated tag team. I think you could say that maybe of all time. I they're wouldn't up there. argue with that. Uh, and the shield has a very, very special place in my heart. So I think I wanted this match to be 10 times better than it was. And because it didn't hit that standard for me, I, I just I didn't enjoy it. Yeah, and I'm the opposite on it. I love the build for this match, first of all, with uh, Sheamus and Cesaro laying out a guy every week. And then, like, it's like their feuds, like, they, like, intertwine. And it was, like, the build to the reunion of the Shield, where, you know, Ambrose would, or Rollins would save Ambrose one week. Then Ambrose would save him the next week. And they'd always leave each other hanging with the field, the the, the Shield fist, easy for me to say. And, uh, and then, finally, they reunite, they get together. To me, though, this was a great old-school tag match the bar dominated it they cut the ring in half i just that's like that's my thing you know what i mean okay. i love yeah. watching a class and it wasn't the modernized tag match it wasn't a super kick tag match it wasn't flippy floppy high spot high spot high spot it was a fundamental well laid out old school tag team match i loved it they worked the heat on rollins they laid ambrose out on the outside for a while ambrose yeah. got the hot tag then he started getting worked down the finish of this match was so fucking good. Uh, it was amazing. I'm, okay. Uh, come on. When Rollins no, came from, I, I, Rollins listen, comes from out of nowhere on the springboard, yeah. I thought that was so good. But yeah, I that's mean, my you that's my talk, you, talk, you want to talk about phenomenal tag team matches? We'll get there later on today. Well, SummerSlam, but... 80, SummerSlam 89 <laughs> is one of the greatest tag team matches of all time. But, um, like I said, there's nothing just like you like you love your number seven match, you know what I mean. So you love everything on your list. And that's yeah, the that's a hard way. one for me to put in I order. I don't, I don't hate this match, but if I'm list like while I'm listing matches of Seth Rollins, it's just not up there for me. But I don't know if it's fair for me to say I don't like it because I do think I I put it at the standard that it didn't meet. Fair because I love the bar, I love the shield, I love tag team wrestling. And I think I, I think I expected a 10 and I got a seven. See, and I, I got what I wanted out of it because I, I just feel like that the match they laid out fit the build going into it. Okay. And I, I was, I was really happy with what I got out of this. God, you're going to hate my list so much. Yeah, I, I can tell. <laughs> oh, Mike, yeah. have you ever, um, okay. My number three, <laughs> before you call me a Homer and being biased, cause I was there live. Brock Lesnar versus Seth Rollins is my number three. Fuck. Now, I'm okay with this. I'm really, I'm very okay. Can I, can I, can I break kayfabe here? This is also my number three. Okay. So I'm okay with this. So it's your number one and two that's really pissing well, me off. Well, before people are like, oh, you were there live, so it holds a special spot. I don't, a good match. I don't remember watching this match live. No, you don't. I was I blackout know. drunk. Yes. Um. So I actually watched this match for the first time this week, kind of, <laughs> and it was fucking great. Yeah. Holy shit! I th- th- this is my favorite Brock Lesnar match. I think maybe of all time. Now that's a bit of a stretch, okay. but that's, that's a okay. bit of a stretch. But 
I hate then again. I I just finished saying that his match two days ago was my favorite match. Well, so listen, what here, the fuck do I know? Here's my thing with Brock Lesnar matches. There's a very similar formula that I've gotten yes. bored at with Brock matches. Start the well, match. Start the match since, since 2012. Yes, it's very very similar formula. Um, but but, block... but let let let's be honest. He's got he's got Shawn Michaels syndrome. He's got two careers. Yeah. 100%. You can't you can't compare 2012 to 2020 Brock to I, I think he has I think he has better matches now but I'm just getting bored of the formula. Depends on the match. Brock Angle is one of my favorite WrestleMania matches of all time. Absolutely. But I just mean like if you're looking at consistent bangers like yeah. I think he's got more big matches in the second 100%. half of his I think he's, had, he's not that he's he was replaced. a bad worker back then. I no, just think that but, he's but, it, it's like Michael replaced. He's replaced big, big match. John at this point, hundred percent. He has, you I know? just, there's a formula and it's just like, I get bored watching the Brock formula sometimes. So this was really refreshing that they threw the Brock formula kind of out of the yeah, window here. 100%. You know, yeah, Seth hit the finish real early at the beginning, but that was the only time that they did that for until like the end end. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, They actually worked a match and Brock sold and Seth sold. And it was just nice to see Brock in that formula again. And, and they watched- really tore it down. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get tickets to this. Uh, I was there the night before at NXT, but uh, I watched this match in my basement with uh, with good friend Lesho Adam Colton. We both really enjoyed this match. It was uh, it's it's also my number three. I I love this match. It is one of my favorite um, Brock Lesnar matches. Mm-hmm. In my opinion, it's his second best SummerSlam match. I'll give it my first best, but I'd have to look at the list again. That's he had right. a good one with the Angle as well in 03 or 04, somewhere in there. I mean, there's a reason some people, not us, but some people call him Mr. Mr. SummerSlam. Yeah, I don't I'd have to really take a look at that because I don't I don't think yeah. he can. I might I might give him top five, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I, but but I don't but he doesn't beat the two guys we're talking about. No, no, he, I think they're clearly one and two. He and he doesn't beat Randy Orton. I have to look at that too, because you can. We some did people... look at that. Uh, if you want to go to www.canonout7.com and look in the archives, uh-huh. uh, we we did count down Randy Orton's best SummerSlam match. Much much like um, me being at that SummerSlam, I was at that show. I just don't remember it either. So uh, that yeah. was the same you thing think, with our live you think, show. You think you were fucked? Twenty two <laughs> Coronas. Um, Maybe. No, but I mean, when I make a list, like I wasn't like thinking like, okay how does randy compare to these other people you know because john cena is a guy you could talk about there too 100 percent. but let's be honest john cena is a guy you could talk about with any of the big four that's fair john cena is pretty that, awesome that's not a lie and All speaking, right, buddy, of, speaking of john top. cena he's my number two off. yeah okay john cena is okay, my number you, two do you, where where do you where would you like me to give me my give you my problems with this match after you talk about what you like about it or when I do my list. I just uh, I think that the finish ruins the match for me. Fucking A it does. But if among, you among among other things. If you take a look at the rest of this match show, it's fucking awesome. It is. Okay, listen to me. I watched it a few days ago and then I watched it again tonight. Here's my I got I, I got three major issues. Number one, I th- I do believe it went a little too long. I know it was only half an hour. Yeah, I yeah, no, I'm with that. Long. It could have went five minutes shorter that, for sure. That 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 that's a nitpick though. Okay, my biggest problem is the finish. The yeah. stupid finish. It was awful. Here's my other thing, and I know people are gonna yell at me, call me a fucking smark, call me an internet fan, whatever. But here's the thing: when is this blatant? I have a problem with it. I'm not that guy to call out botches and to call out fucking problems and shit, unless it's really blatant. John Cena was so blatantly calling his spots in this match that it takes me right out of it. Uh, you must not enjoy any John Cena matches then. But this worse that's, than usual. That's and, kind and of his, I, it's kind of his no, thing. I, like, I know, it's but this, not... this, this so badly that it took me out of the match. To hear him yelling his spots at, at Seth, I just I just couldn't watch it anymore. Um, I didn't it was, notice it, was it that any bad. worse than normal. Like To me, it was just normal. It, I don't, I don't me, know if I'm just used normal. to it. Um, yeah, is he bad for it? 100%. I agree with you. But this was bad, bad, bad. And it ruined it for me personally. And I that's love- why and I'm going to I'm going to rip the bandaid off. That's why it's my number 7. 
Well, I mean, you're losing your own credibility at this point for any arguments I'm, you have. No, because, because I didn't like a match where John Cena didn't know what the fuck he was doing all fucking night. And Number that, seven, and had, though. Had Come on. Worst, it, was a, it, was a, it was a shit match, dude. It was a shit match. You're they, out of your it, mind. It's not even close. It's not even the top 50 of Mike, John's best matches. Mike. John you... Cena is one of the best wrestlers in the history of this business. And it doesn't even come close to one of his best matches. Mike, nervous. listen, I understand if you don't like the match, but for you to come right out and say it was a shit match, you have no fucking credibility for the rest of the show, if that's what you're saying. It Bullshit. was a shit match. Yeah, okay. In my see, opinion, hey, I'm not fucking shitting on your opinion. You you hold up, but I'm not saying that anything of that. You you're coming out here and saying it's a shit match. Am I saying that my opinion is that I think this is one of John Cena's worst pay-per-view matches? Yes. And, That's my fucking opinion. And in my opinion, it's going to hurt your credibility going forward in the rest of this show with any argument you have to say that this is a shit match. But I can but I can say that about you. Listen, about you, can say, you, you can say you can say I don't like. you doesn't can say I don't my, like doesn't hurt my doesn't hurt my credibility. It does. I'm telling you what I like it. No, it doesn't. You, you can how sit many here. Times you have to say on this fucking show how subjective wrestling is. Yes. Just because you fucking like something doesn't make it make it the gift of fucking God. To no. me, that match is dog shit. My fucking opinion. That's you it. can sit there and it say you didn't enjoy the match because there's and a I lot didn't. of matches that I didn't enjoy. Yes. But to say that it's a shit match, you're out to Am fucking lunch. Am I saying lunch. that you think it should be a shit match? No. Am I going to go on fucking I don't, the internet? I don't and think say, anyone's hey, ever said it's a shit match. This is a shit match. I did. I I've, said never it. I've never heard it. I've never heard one match. person. I don't give say a fuck. It. You can get all huffy says. puffy it's as you want. want. No, I'm not telling uh, you that your opinion, this or that. Have your opinion. You fight. You fight. You just told I me. I said that it I hurts no your credibility. credibility. Yeah. You just told me I had no. To say that this match is shit because I don't like something that you like. No. To say no, that this match exactly is shit. It is. It's, but it's not just me, Mike. This match is a fucking critically acclaimed match in the wrestling world. So to say First that it's of all, shit. I don't give a fuck. How many times have you go? Have you gone and fucking? Do you compare lists every fucking week? I do. I go, and, and and so you've seen how it. Goes. I've seen this match the never fall before three. Mike, it was all in everybody's top. I don't three. give a shit what they say. So, it's but about what me. I'm saying, what I'm, I'm saying, saying from my standpoint, what I like in my wrestling, which is I didn't fine. See that night. So, but no, what I that's and what not I because you, you just have me out saying I had no credibility. I think it hurts your credibility. You're, this you're match putting is shit. my fucking credibility as a fucking podcaster on fucking on no, fucking blast. Here. I'm putting you your are. credibility for no, your you're, arguments you're, today. You're putting me on fucking blast because because I think you said I something ridiculous. Fucking, I agreed with you. This whole you don't have to agree with me. This is a debate show, Mike. We're doing a list here. If you say you want to debate. You're gonna you tell me. Debate, I'm fucking debating. Yes. And I'm not fucking. I'm not gonna call out you personally and call it your fucking credibility. I said that you calling this match shit. I think hurts your credibility for arguing this list, Mike. No one in the world has said this match is shit. If you don't like the match, you don't have to like the match. But this I is did far. Like the match. This is far from a shit match, though, Mike. That's ridiculous to say out loud that this match is shit. Okay, okay. The, so, so you want to so, start talking so about you, shit so matches? You've never, so you've never. The fiend it, against Seth Rollins is a shit match, you've Mike. Never called, that's a you've shit ne- match. You have never Goldberg a, against a the Undertaker. A that's a shit match. Okay. This right. match is not your cup of tea, so and that's so fine. Me that's your opinion, your ba- and you don't so have to basing, like it. So you base your opinion on what everybody else likes. Is no, I'm basing my opinion on what actual shit matches are. Mike, if you don't like the match, you don't have to like the match. But to call this match shit is ridiculous. It's, it's ridiculous. Not. But it's my fucking opinion. That's great. And you don't like it's... the match. But it's not. Yes. Sh- you can't say it's shit. This match but is I not can. shit. I've but seen shit matches before, okay. Mike. Listen I've talked to, to you about Listen shit matches. Listen to me. You have a fucking, you have a glass of Pepsi and a glass of Coke. You fucking drink the Coke. I like this Coke. I drink the Pepsi. This tastes like shit. Am I gonna fucking say your credibility is fucking ruined for the rest of fucking life? No. I'm just you saying. You like Mike, one thing, you don't like I, the other. I, I, I like I'm, something you don't. I like you like something. There's a I big don't. difference between Coke fine. and Pepsi and calling a good match shit. If you don't like the match, hey, it's one thing not to like the match. I didn't enjoy the SummerSlam main event this year, but I know it wasn't a shit match, even though I was bored out of my tree watching it. I still don't think it was a shit match. To call this match shit, I think, is absurd. 
You don't like it. Hey, I'm not shitting no, on you for a, not liking the match. Pro- you are, though. No, I'm not. Are. I respect my the fact that you is, personally no, don't bullshit. like the match. You threw, you threw respect out the fucking window when you called it my credibility. I said I, I think have, it hurts I've your credibility to call this match shit. Almost three fucking years, and, mm-hmm. and the last person who should be calling up my fucking credibility is my fucking co-host. <laughs> I mean, when you say something I think is stupid, I'm going to call you out on it. I think you said something stupid here. I do. I really think that it was a stupid comment, Mike. I'm going to call you out on it. To call this right. match shit. Listen, you don't like the match. I respect that you don't like the match. Stop I do. using that word because you threw that word out when you no, fucking no. called I out respect my credibility when anybody doesn't like as a, a match. fucking pod goes host. I'm not, I'm not calling out your Go credibility your as a pod. One. We already well, know what it is, but talk about it anyway. It's, it's not a shit match, I'll tell you that much. It's fucking Seth Rollins against Dolph Ziggler. Now, no, it's not a shit match. It's a great match. It's uh, I won't lie to you. It's in a weird spot for me. It's only my 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 number four. This I need to hear you. Are... Okay, give me your match order then, because I don't understand where your list is coming from this week. Like I don't know See, if you're. I don't. But at this point, I don't give a fuck because we started this list off me saying, you know what I love about this? I love that our matches, our match order is going to be out, uh, out yeah. of order. So I'm I curious to know what you your order I... is. Yeah. Yeah, but but then you called me out. You fucking put me on blast, so I don't even fucking. <laughs> you said something thing. stupid, Mike. I'm not blasting your list order. You did. I'm blasting, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. no, I'm you, blasting you, blasted you calling my a entire, match. Like, well, I don't even know what the point of going on. It's like this is the equivalent of burying somebody in wrestling. At this point, what's the point of me Listen, doing the show when I know you told me you wanted to fight tonight? We're having no a fight tonight, have, man. We're having a debate. What's the point of me doing a fucking show? You might as well fucking go call up one of your other buddies. So why don't you sell podcast. me then, Mike? That's what this I, is. I'm this calling you out on at something. This point again, what's the so fucking sell people on it. Show and, instead of getting happy puppy. Said I have no credibility at all. I said I think it hurts your show. credibility, Mike. I didn't say you have no credibility. I said I think it hurts your credibility for the argument you're having tonight. You're calling a match that everybody in the world says is a, a an amazing match. I don't think it's as everybody amazing as everybody. On, Mike, man. just fucking look at online anything. I don't give Anyone a that fuck talks. what other buddy thinks. So That's what makes this show the so argument I said Usually, 99% of the time, you ridiculous. and I don't give a shit about the fucking other fans. I don't give a fuck. It's about us. It's about our show. And that's what I'm talking to you. I think likes. it's ridiculous that you called this match shit. I think it's okay. ridiculous. I think it's I, I think it's ridiculous, Mike. Okay. So instead of getting huffy puffy care. about it, sell me on it, Mike. Tell I'm me your list huffy. and tell I'm me not, about it. I'm not Huffy you Puffy. You are. You're losing your mind right now, Mike. I'm not. No, listen to me. I'm not Huffy Puffy about you fucking not liking this. I'm not Huffy that you fucking put me on blast and called me out on my credibility. For That's this, for this debate about. that we're having, Mike. That's what I said. For this Let's debate, just, we're, I think we're it hurts. Need to move on. Go on to your fucking. I told you my that. number one. It's Seth and I Dolph. know. Let's and let's talk about it's the a great match. match. It's a good fucking match. So tell me your order so I can see where you got it. You started saying it's your number four, so let's hear yeah, the rest of it. It's my what do you got? Four. Give me your give me your right. rundown. How different are we here? All right, I've got, like I said, I've got Cena at my number seven. Which one? I've got Cena at seven. I'm, yeah, yeah, I, I'm at number seven. It's where it is. I've got uh, Shield and Bar at my number six. Yeah, and that's fine. I could totally have that in the six or seven spot too. I've got Ambrose as my number five. Yeah, the last. <sighs> The, the fucking Lumberjack thing hurts it. For me personally, I don't See, like Lumberjack. And matches. I think the Lumberjack match makes this one better. Because I think it adds to Ambrose's is it, craziness. Is it a great Lumberjack match as far as Lumberjack matches go? Yes. Does it make it better? I don't know. I do because I think the spots that they did put Ambrose over yeah. more. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, and, right. beca- and I also like the story they told because the shield just broke up. That um, that Nobody likes them, either one of the guys. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I like yeah, that I story it. that they told as well. I do think that this is the only time in the history of wrestling where the Lumberjack stip made it better. So my number four is Dolph, like I said. Um, my number three is Brock. Brock. My number two is Edge. I really love that match. And, and I get it. It's it's not nearly. That's why as soon as you said where Edge was on your list, I'm like, holy fuck, we're, this is not going to be even close. Uh, but I really do. I love that match. I, I yeah. thought it was phenomenal. And my number one is Finn Balor. Yeah, I mean, obviously our lists are different to each their own on that. But um, I I don't agree, obviously, with your list, and you don't agree with my list, which is fine. But don't it is fine. Like, and, but but I okay, we can move on, and we're gonna be really good. I'm just letting you know right now. I was offended by you calling up my credibility. I don't give a fuck about the rest of the list. Yeah, but you need Talk to hear the whole. Up. You need to hear the whole sentence. You're just fixated on that word. 
it's I think it hurts your credibility for our argument today, Mike. All right. All right. Well, let's see if we can simmer down the the tension, the heat, the SummerSlam heat here. And let's uh, let's get Mike. You're going to tell me your let, let's run through these quick because we got some debating to do here. Uh, well, that, and that we've done this list already before. I kinda, but yeah. These, um, are, these are your top seven Brett matches, right? Yeah, let's, I can bang through this real easy. Yeah, yeah, just go boom. We won't talk about the matches. We'll just bang no. through them, and I'll tell you what no. mine are. Uh, I didn't write the years down, but you can figure that out for yourselves. Uh, number seven, Jerry Lawler. Number yeah. Six, oh, number six, Owen Hart. Mm-hmm. Number four, Demolition. What about five? 19, 1990, not 1988. You skip five. What did I say? You said seven. Um, seven, six. Five seven. is Demolition. Okay, you skip. You you said your numbers were there. Seven was ninety. Was Doink or sorry, seven, Lawler? No, seven is Lawler. Six is Owen. Four yeah. is Demolition. Okay. Five well, is uh, uh. You keep saying four is Demolition. What? You keep going seven. Okay. Six. Seven four. is Lawler. <laughs> yeah. Seven is Lawler. Six is Owen. Five is Demolition. Four is um. The Brain Busters. Okay. Three is the Undertaker. Two is the Bulldog. One is Mr. Perfect. Okay. We're not far off. I, I've got SummerSlam 93 as my number seven. The only reason this is my number six is because it's the only tell, match. Tell me tell me the impo- the opponents. I, I fucked up my ears. So. Uh Doink and Doink and Lawler. I just kind of combine oh, yeah. I combine them together. <laughs> I it's okay. the same, it's the same shit. You know, I thought the Doink match was better personally, but the Lawler match had more heat. Yeah. Um the only reason that this is my number six because I haven't rewatched it in about ten years is uh, Taker, so I just don't have it fresh in my head. But I just remember I love the match. Man. You, yeah, but, we like, talked. I, I we think talk I would swap it with week, Owen right? for sure. Yeah, I, I, and everyone talks about the Taker match. I got to rewatch it. I just didn't have time this week to rewatch it. Um, and I just, you know, I haven't okay. watched it in a long time. I probably haven't watched it since I did my Brett SummerSlam list last year. So, um. Number five, Demolition, two out of three falls, but I could swap that easily with my number four, which is Owen. Uh, Number three, Brain Busters. Number two, Perfect. Number one, Bulldog. So we're not too far off there. Okay. I mean, Bulldog Perfect, let's like, I think it's going to be 50 50 among fans, right? Yeah. Yeah. I went with Bulldog just because I thought, I thought the match was a little bit better and it was like a bigger atmosphere if, and it was Brett. I, it was really brett like being brett you know that's it i feel like if i wasn't i hate this term but lack of a better term if i wasn't a smart market like if i didn't know shit and i didn't know that brett that that, that bulldog was fucking out of it he was dead on his feet the whole match i think this match could could stand to be my number one yeah but but knowing that both men put their all into it for 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 mr perfect versus versus brett it's got to be my number one even brett i think calls this his number one yeah yeah it's he said it's the best match of his career the bulldog one Mm -hmm. no perfect i've heard him say the bulldog was his yeah? yeah i've heard him say that one uh, I, I think I he said never... perfect was his favorite think... opponent. Okay, okay, maybe I, I think. But the bulldog up. match right. is his favorite match he's ever done. But the the okay. but perfect was one of his favorite opponents. I think. Now the whole point of this show was to decide once and for all who was Mister SummerSlam, right? Yeah. Now, obviously, my list is going to be much different than what yours <laughs> would have been had you made one. I'm going to slam out my 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 19. Well, how about you give us the top 10? Do we need to do 19? Do you want to do 19? I mean, sure. We, we could do it. I mean, I'm not going match by match. I'm just going to slam it out like I did my breath list. All right, bang it out. Hit them up. Hit them up. All 19 matches these, these gentlemen have had. Worst of the bunch. And this is a shit match. Fuck. I don't care what anybody says. Brett versus Isaac Yankum. Yes, I agree with that. All right. Uh, number 18, uh, Seth versus Dominic. Mm-hmm. Number 17, WWE versus Nexus. I really number like this six, match, but it's not a Brett showcase. From this point on, I like every match. The only two matches I don't like on the card, even the one I call shit, is fucking high. You know what I mean? I called it shit earlier. I was being harsh. It's not shit in comparison to something like Yankum or Dominic or 
You know what I mean? I didn't hate the Dominic match as much as you did either. Um, moving on, I've got uh, number 16 is Doink. Number 15 is Bretton Lawler. Number 14 is Shield in the Bar. Number 13 is uh, Demolition. Um, I'm sorry. 88. Demolition 88. That's yeah. important to note. Yep. Number 12 is uh, Seth and Cena. See, number 12 out of fucking 19 isn't bad. <laughs> number 11. Yeah, do you is, mind? Number 11 is, is, uh, is Seth and Dolph. Number 10 is Seth and Dean. Wait, number you put nine, Seth and Dolph not even in your top 10? Number 10. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, or sorry, sorry, I fucked up. Number 11 is, uh, is Seth and Dean. Number 10 is Seth and Dolph. My uh, yeah, either way, you're s- still out to lunch here. <laughs> number 9 is Seth and Brock. Number 8 is Seth and Finn. And then it's the Brett Show, baby. <laughs> well, I wonder number... why, Mike, because you're being it's fucking not... a little biased here. I'm not being biased. Bret Hart is a far better performer than Seth Rollins ever that's will not... be. That's not it's... what the argument is, Mike. It's not but who's it a better it's not who's okay, a better listen, wrestler. Listen, it has listen. who has better SummerSlam matches. Okay. But if it's who's we're a better not... wrestler, then Bret Hart is the best wrestler we're probably a... of all we're time. A... We're a top seven show. Yeah, but Let's your be... list is so, fucked no, though, Mike. It isn't though. Top seven. Top seven. Number seven, Owen, Brett. Number six, for me, it was Edge. I know you don't like that as much as much as I do. You, I mean, go ahead and put your number one in that spot, your golf spot. That's fine. Um, for and then Brainbusters, Demolition, Taker, Bulldog, Perfect, all better matches than anything Seth's ever done. And that's not me that's shitting on, on Seth. It's not. They're just far better performances and far better wrestling matches. They just are. It's it's not. And and you know what? You want to call me out on my bullshit? I'm going to tell you right now. You go fucking talk to 90% of wrestling fans, no one's going to fucking disagree with me. Uh, your list was shit, your top 19, but that's okay. Um, I won't argue. You, I, I won't argue. No, you have no fucking credibility. I won't argue. I guarantee that a ton of people would fucking agree with me. I, a ton of people. I don't know. I think you've got a lot of Seth matches not placed fairly. I, I think you're just being placed? biased. Fine. No, I'm not being a Brett biased. You are. I'm not even a no. Listen, I like Brett's never Brett been one of my favorites. Brett and Owen. I'm just fucking tell Brett is one of your favorites. You say this all the time. Brett is one of your favorites. All of your favorite matches involve Brett Hart. You just don't know that he's one of your. He's like a, your subconsciously is telling you. Listen, Brett Hart is your favorite. Not my fault. He's got some of the best matches Listen, in the history of the fucking company. It's Brett and Bulldog. Fault. Brett and Bulldog is the best match, in maybe SummerSlam history. I will like. You got to be a moron to argue that. All right, Brett and Perfect is right up there, but I put Seth and Dolph not far behind that either. But they're just two totally different style of matches, Mike. Brett and Perfect is short with Perfect having just a short back. Enough, you're gonna call me out saying, "Listen, to all the other fans, what they're saying." I guarantee you're fucking wrong as far as it. And I would never use that as an argument, but the fact that the, the Brett, you use it as I'm an giving argument, you that Brett and Perfect are are the no, one I'm and so, two, I'm and so, I, Brett I'm and Bulldog that nobody and Brett else and Perfect. Is I'm saying nobody's going to put fucking Seth and Dolph where you. Well, I mean, every list that I than research, Owen, better than better not, than the Brain Busters, better than Demolition. No, not that not that I'm uh, comparing to a lot of other stuff, but everything that I did look at, Dolph and Seth was very like top three of Seth's greatest matches. And if you look up, you know, Seth's great, greatest matches. Yes. Seth's greatest You You didn't matches. even put it in your top 10 between uh, an 18 match list, Mike. Yeah, because Owen, because Bret Hart has better I, matches. Bret and Owen, I'm sorry to say, it's not better than than Seth and Brock, than Seth and Dolph either. So is you. I just, I think this I is find where that we finally be... are going to do it. I think we're finally going to do this. I am begging people. I don't give a fuck if it's a Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, MySpace, fucking Carrier Pigeon. People, please, for the love of God, give your opinions here. Like because if, if I'm looking I've never here, feel I've never felt so fucking torn here. Yeah, we're never like I'm not saying that that Seth is the definite Mr. SummerSlam. You know, I I'm not. I'm just saying that he's he deserves to be right you there with Brett. I said that last week. <laughs> yeah, and I've gone back and I've watched ninety percent of Brett stuff. I've watched it. I'm I'm my, hey man. I'm not going to call I him willing a tie. To give him, am I willing to give him the number two spot? I don't 100%, know, man. Hundred percent. One hundred percent. But 
But number one and number two are like that for me. I'm sorry. I, they I think, are. It's I match think quality. If for me, and I and one of my favorite matches of all time, and I'm taking my personalness out of this because I, I can do that when I make my list, and I try to do that when that's that's why I like the dynamic of our show. You go in your heart, and I try to take my heart out of stuff. Sometimes it's not successful, sometimes it is. Like the like the demolition, sorry, uh, yeah, well, demolition and the brain busters are two of my favorite matches of all they're, time. They're two of the Personal. greatest tag team matches in the history of WWF. Yeah, I think I we just, can both agree on that right now. I, I think that though Seth and Dolph and Seth and Brock are but better matches than those two. I do. And that's me wow. saying, and that's me saying two of my personal favorite. Now, personally, I, I, I'm Bret Hart all the way. But if Listen, I'm watching man, his I, matches, I'm, I'm gonna as, as a tag team lover as yourself, I'm gonna give you the big thumbs up saying oh, big ups on you for even saying those words because I bet yeah. that hurts to say. Well, listen, if you're but asking I me can't agree with you. If you're asking can't. me which match do I personally want to watch more, I'm gonna pick I grew up on the Heart Foundation, Demolition, and, and the Brain Busters. Like personally, those are okay. Two, then in that case, what but, makes these other two matches to you? I just think what the work rate I, I, I just think Seth and Dolph, especially. They just are on a different planet in this match. Oh, they man. have they have everything in it, Mike. It's not a spot festy match either. They tell a great story. Oh, no, they have the not. crowd involved in it. The backstory. Do I think Dolph is one of the greatest of this generation? Yes, I do. Is he Tully Blanchard? No. No. <laughs> no. Nobody's Tully Blanchard, but just because That's it doesn't insane. it doesn't mean. But they're told. But they're two totally different workers putting on two totally different type of matches. You know what I mean? You can't. Yeah, there's no and comparison. One's better, and one's better than. And the it's other. the same thing with Brett and Seth. <laughs> They're two totally different workers that do two yeah. totally different styles. You know what I mean? I I've got to rewatch we, the Taker match. Can we can we agree on one thing? What's that? If we lived in a fantasy world, Brett in his prime versus Seth in his prime would be, be one the of the greatest, greatest match in SummerSlam history. history. <laughs> you know what I mean? It'd be the greatest match in SummerSlam history. <laughs> yeah. I won't. Um, I'm not going to try to argue hard that that brett isn't mr SummerSlam. i i think you could flip a coin on this one mike in all honesty i think both guys have a great case on it um i just think that people need to take Seth's SummerSlam work more serious because oh, listen it, it's not me it's, this is work, not a thing of me not this taking body of, and I, and i agree with you i don't think people I will agree with you 100 percent that I don't here, think people give him the credit he deserves. Here's my take on here's my take on both these guys. I think that Brett has had uh like his matches, like the, the specific matches, especially the big ones, are better than any matches, not just in SummerSlam history, but some of the best matches in wrestling history. But I think Seth has had more good matches at SummerSlam than Brett. That's where my argument and, and, is. I think and, Brett's and, got a couple, and, and I'm going to disagree. I, I, and I that's fair, to. but that's what my argument is. To. If if I'm taking a look uh, at all of Brett's matches, Brett, if I'm taking Brett, a look at all of Brett's matches at SummerSlam and all yeah. of Seth's matches at SummerSlam, I think that Brett's bigger matches are better. But I think Seth has a a more good matches at SummerSlam than Brett. Not that Brett doesn't have good matches at SummerSlam. I just think Seth's he's got much more better matches like like a Brett's, like a consistently better match from record my than point Brett. Of view, and this is strictly from my point of view brett's had 11 matches and six of them were phenomenal and i think seth has had eight, eight matches and seven of them have been phenomenal and yeah we're we're not going to see that but you said obviously. you but but all seven matches because you and i have the same seven matches right yeah yeah right you said you enjoyed every single one of seth's SummerSlam matches that are on these lists, except oh, for the shield, on, on the, except, on the except for the shield, I... except for the shield and the bar. You said fell fell short, right? So that means that fell of... fell fell short of my standard. Do you still enjoy the match? I'm not. I but I did enjoy the match. Okay, so out of eight SummerSlam matches that Seth had, you've liked seven of them, right? Yes. And you've liked six and, out of but, eleven but, for Brett, but so you think I Brett's so... matches are better, right? No, I liked I liked I liked eight of eleven. Oh, you said six. I'm, I'm saying six were phenomenal. Okay, but I liked eight. I I'm not going to call him and Lawler phenomenal. No, I'm not going to call him and Doink phenomenal. No, but did I like them? Yeah, I, I liked them. Mm-hmm. 
You know I just, I, mean? I, I don't know. I'm going to give Brett the nod for having the better, like, bigger matches. But I think Seth has got more better matches. Sure. You know what I mean? But, like, nothing's going to touch Bulldog. Nothing's going to touch Perfect. Then I start to talk about Seth after that, though. Man, you know what I'm looking forward to? What are we going to do next year? I mean, we did Randy. We did Brett. Now we did Brett versus Seth. Man, we got to top ourselves for SummerSlam next year. Got to do Hogan or Brock, man. Yeah. Who, who do you want, Hogan or Brock? Hogan would be a lot of fun. Brock would be a lot of fun. Who no, I mean, which side like... do you want to take? Who's better? We need a new fight next year. Brock. You want Brock? I'll just take Hogan just to piss you off. Uh, yeah, just just. Nothing's comparing to the Hulkster and Earthquake, brother. No, it's it's hard for me because I'm not a Hulk fan, so I can't, and I've never been a Hulk fan. It's it's the only I shouldn't say it. I shouldn't say that. I'm a Hollywood Hogan fan. Is Hogan Hogan's the Undertaker of SummerSlam though, right? He was undefeated at SummerSlam, is he not? That sounds about right. I think he is. Yeah. Well. I mean, we're not going to agree on this one. I didn't figure we would. No, and we're no. Neither did I. Um, we got a little bit more hot than I expected us to. I mean, you fired me up, man. With the exception you of that, you fired me up. You listen, piece of shit. with the exception you of I your, love, I love you almost as much as I hate you. It's good. Oh, I'll take that. That's a nice thing anyone said to me all week. Uh, <laughs> yeah, with the exception of your take on Seth and Cena, which I I will take to my grave. It'll be on my tombstone. I think it was ridiculous. I, Listen, I don't I admitted, disagree with I admit it. I'm probably being too harsh when I call it a piece of shit. Okay. But that finish. It's terrible. Fucking it is. ruins it for me. Um, it's a terrible I know, finish. I know you said it, it's par for the course of Cena, but this match was worse than others for him calling the spots. I I, 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 I mean that. I think I so, just like drowned just, it out. I think I just became so used to Cena calling out his spots that I, I don't even notice it. You know what I mean? It's like if you're a DJ, again, it's might, like if you're a DJ be... at a strip club, you don't notice naked women walking <laughs> around anymore, right? Or men. I, 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 I noticed them. <laughs> All right, yeah, like I said, we're not like you said, we're not gonna agree. However, do we agree in the final? Bret Hart is Mr. SummerSlam. Uh, I'm not ready to say definitely that he is. I will say I'm sticking to my point. I think Brett's matches, his big matches are better, but I just I think Seth's got a better um string of consistently good matches at SummerSlam. That's the best you're well, going to get out of me. You know, you, you know, this is great. This is great. It's the best you're going to get out, out of me. Out of all our interviews that we've done on the show, this will be the one that gets picked up by all the dirt sheets. Tyler of Count It Out says that Bret Hart isn't Mr. Summers. Hey, but you know what, though? I'm not the only person who's saying that. There's people that are getting on this Seth Rollins train with this as well. All right. All right. And, I, and I'm a Bret Hart guy through and through since my uh, he's been my guy. You, you threw out your Bret Hart card tonight, buddy. Mm. <laughs> Nah, Bret Hart, would, Bret Hart would be so mad to hear this show. Well, yeah, he would because he he, he does not like <laughs> yes, Seth's work, yes. right? He he's yeah. openly yeah. criticized well, Seth well, that, Rollins. That, that and that and he's as bad as Ric Flair with if you don't call him the greatest in the world. Ooh. All right, take us home. Before All right, let's take the let's take the show home. Shit yeah. out of it. You know what? We got hot tonight, but uh, I. Uh, I did not tell you to shut the fuck up. I'm proud of myself. I mean, you um, could have. You were yelling a lot. I, I couldn't understand. I, could have. I, I don't. I didn't I understand have. a lot of what was coming out of your mouth at one no. point. So you might have. I was mad. I was mad, but you were, <laughs> you, you you hurt my feelings. That's the problem. You hurt my feelings. You might as well. You hey. didn't call it my credibility as a podcaster. You might as well call me a bad father. That's how much that hurt my feelings. Which mm. one would be worse? I don't know. I'm not a father. I don't know. I listen. Do you? I you're, have. Three, you're not a I bad have, father. Hold on. I just have, let me let I me talk for a minute children. here. Children. I have you, three children. I, a boy, a girl, and a podcast. <laughs> listen, listen. I, I will say one thing about your parenting skills. In the last week and a half, you have turned your son into a Metallica fan and a wrestling fan. So if that's not dad of the year, I don't I know what wanna, is. I did want to. I just need to get him a Bengals. Yeah. Now if yeah, you get him no, into the Bengals, I got him in the Bengals. You can retire. You can just stop yeah. parenting. That's it. They just raise themselves after this. I um I did want to mention that really quick just because it's a it's a proud moment in my life. Uh, before before we say goodbye, I 
bought my kid, my four-year-old son, his first wrestling action figures this week. Um, and it's cool to me because I brought him. He was really, uh, he's been having a really hard time uh, the last uh, few weeks with his baby sister coming around, not getting all the attention. We had a tragedy in the family that I won't go into. Just a lot of shit going on. And he feels it. He doesn't know about the tragedy, but he understands there's shit going on. So I sent my wife away for a couple of days and I just took my son under my wing and said, let's go have fun. Didn't pay attention to anything else. It was just me and my boy. We went to the splash pad. We went to the mall. We, we just went around having a good time. And uh, when I bring him to the toy store, I bring him to Toys R Us. And normally it's, listen, we're going, but there's a good chance you're not fucking getting nothing. So fucking be ready for that. He was ready for that. And usually he has a meltdown when we leave. This time he didn't. He was a good boy. He didn't fucking have a meltdown at all. I was proud of him. We did went other shit. He did a couple things that were really good for him personally, uh, for, for personal growth. So I said, you know what? Fuck it. I brought him back to Toys R Us. And I said, let's go through these aisles, the action figures and shit. I let him pick whatever he wanted. There was, there was fucking Batman. There was fucking Superman. There was Marvel. There was, there was Mario. You name it. He could have got anything. Now, this boy has never watched wrestling. He's seen me watch wrestling, but his mom doesn't want him watching it yet. He goes by and he sees the WWE symbol on a fucking package of Kushida. And he says, Daddy, that's your show. I said, yeah. Which is funny because 90% of the time, if he sees me watching wrestling, it's Impact. The not truth WWE. comes out. Mike is a <laughs> WWE yeah. mark. He doesn't even watch <laughs> Impact. <laughs> Leave it to the kid to always fraud it's, out it's the so parents. Funny. But if he looks on my phone, I have the WWE app on there. He sees that symbol everywhere, right? Daddy, that's your show. He's a smart kid. Yeah. And then I said, why? Do, do you want one of these toys? And I'm pointing out. And he grabs a Randy Orton figure. He says, I like this guy. I said, fuck it, hey, so do I. And I said, okay, well. And I told him to hold on to Randy. And he holds on to Randy. He looks around. And he sees this set. That's usually $70 and it was down to 40 for like the week or whatever. And it's the, the, the WWE championship title replica with a Randy Orton figure and a Drew McIntyre figure. And he sees that and his eyes get big. He goes, daddy. So, excuse me. So of course I get him that. Dude, I wrapped that fucking title around his waist. He wore it for five straight hours. It wouldn't let me take it off him. When I told him, I said, you know what you're supposed to say? I said, if you're going to wear that, when you see people, you say, the champ is here. <laughs> Wish I didn't tell him that. He was telling everybody. He gets on the bus to the bus driver. The champ is here! <laughs> I got one the on the phone as well. Yeah, and he, sees, he sees the mailman. The champ is here! You call. The champ is here! He's running around. He's got an action figure in both hands, which... Which, by the way, he calls Drew and Randy Walker. I love it. <laughs> yeah, they're brothers and now. He, the new the new gimmick is in full effect. And then he he just keeps yelling, "The champ is here! The champ is here!" I love it. He's uh he's a mark in the making. I couldn't be more proud. I love I lo I love it so much. I'm very happy. Do you remember what With, your first action figure was that you got ever? I do. I what do. do. What do you got? It was a uh, Andre the Giant LGN. Sweet, not bad. Yeah. I don't my very first. I don't specifically remember the LJNs that I got because I had the whole set. I remember I had like a giant Hulk Hogan, like this. I don't know what it was. It was huge. It's worth a fortune. I wish I still had it. <laughs> and uh, but the first like figure I remember getting is um, the the Hasbro line, the first series. It was Jake yeah. the Snake and the Million Dollar Man. My 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 first that I remember loving, like really getting into. Were my Hulk Hogan and Junkyard Dog uh, thumb wrestlers? Oh yeah, yeah, those are great. Yeah, yeah, yeah those are. Just and a prelude I got, like. I got those the same Christmas that I got the pack of WrestleMania. It was WrestleMania trading cards. I think it was up to WrestleMania six. I have all those. Yeah. Anyone want to buy them? A million dollars. I think. I think. I, I to... think it was WrestleMania's one through six. I believe. Yeah, I've got. Those. Anyways, mortgage is going up. They are for sale. Hit me up with an offer. <laughs> All right, Danny, take, take us home. Uh, on behalf of making my kid a fucking wrestling fan, 
And on behalf of you and I not killing each other tonight, um, as much as I hate fighting with you, I love fighting with you. Uh, uh, I, as much as I hate you, I fucking love you. You're one of the only people I get this mad at and still want to be friends with afterwards. You know that? It's the restaurant in us, buddy. There's something, there's something about you. It's because I'm hot. Wanna, I just want to make out with you right Woo! now. Let's yeah. go. <laughs> Sign up to our uh, OnlyFans, guys. <laughs> uh check out everything we've been doing check out barry wrestling uh, uh we didn't talk about it today um uh tyler did a bunch of stuff at captain test this weekend oh, we'll so probably fun. yeah we'll probably uh we'll, we'll we'll get the word out on that somehow right yeah. i'm sure you got some footage and shit. check out our instagram i post uh, a bunch yeah, of videos I, yeah. I post a bunch of videos on our instagram what a great weekend congratulations yeah. to all our friends at barry wrestling we're going to continue to be doing uh, work with barry wrestling over the next few months so keep an eye on that um with all that said we have finally been counted out burn it down i mean cheers